Okay, so here's a graph of what we're trying to graph. So obviously, if you needed to graph this and it wasn't a math class, you could just use a graphing calculator. But, you know, we're trying to learn different parts of polynomials, trying to build our foundation so that we can learn calculus and other algebraic methods. So, um, so I kind of see the irony of just graphing it. But if you're tasked to finding zeros, you can always look at the graph and it'll tip you off. So we could see that this graph has a rational zero at negative 2, because that's where it crosses the x-axis, at 3 and 4. So, you know, if I tried 1 and negative 1 and neither one worked, you know, I'd probably try 2, then negative 2, and then eventually find it anyway. But sometimes you might do synthetic division wrong, and you might miss a zero, and you might end up doing it for a really long time. So, like, when that happens, you know, graph it on your calculator, on Desmos, and then you can cheat and see, alright, there's a negative two is I'm going to try that one next okay now if this was like a non-calculator test I, I would either just make you sweat it out and try to find all them or I would make you I would give you a zero or two so I'll tell you where to start all right so let's go back and finish this problem okay so now I'm going to try a negative two and I know it should work so if it doesn't I know I did something wrong either on my graph or the synthetic division so I'm going to bring down that one I'm going to multiply all right, and I get negative 2, add negative 7, multiply 14, add 12, multiply negative 24, all right, and now I have a 0. Okay, so that is my work for C. Use synthetic division to find at least one 0. All right, and let me mark that off on my x-axis right there at negative 2. Okay, now it says to factor the polynomial. So to do that, we're going to take our results in C and use that to factor it. Okay, so I just did f of x divided by x plus 2 because the 0 of negative 2, sorry, the 0 of x plus 2 is negative 2. And when I divided them, I got this as my quotient, which as a quadratic is x squared uh, minus 7x plus 12. All right, that's what I just did down in C. It tells me what I wrote right up here, okay? So, now if I take that and I think about multiplying x plus 2 on both sides, then I get that f of x equals x plus 2 times x squared minus 7x plus 12. Alright, so I just, so by doing synthetic division, I just factored out an x plus 2, and this remaining quadratic is where I could find my other two zeros and my other two factors. So now I could take this here and factor it. So by looking for two numbers that multiply to 12 and add to negative 7. All right, and if you're having trouble with that, you can also do the quadratic formula. But you should never do synthetic division with a quadratic because you can either factor it or do the quadratic formula. All right, so let's factor it since we can. So two numbers that multiply to 12 and add to negative 7 will be negative 4 and negative 3. So now I'm going to put those on my number line. So there's a 3 and a 4. All right, because those are the zeros of these factors, right? If I plug negative 2 in there, I get 0. If I plug 3 in there, I get 0. If I plug 4 in there, I get 0. And this is what f of x equals. So that's where we just, those are the x values where y is 0. And where y is 0, well, that's another name for the x-axis. So now we got our zeros. We got our end behavior. Um, so now we pretty much just want to look at the behavior around our zeros. So um, since each factor has a multiplicity of 1, uh, the zeros are going to all just have multiplicities of 1. All right, so since each factor is being raised to the first power, these zeros all have multiplicity of 1, which means they're all going to have normal behavior around the zero. So it's not going to bounce off a zero. All right, it's not going to snake at a zero. All right, you'll see other examples like that, but it's going to go right through these zeros straight like normal. All right, and then our y-intercept, that's going to be the y value when x is zero. So if we plug zero in for x, we get y is 24. So we could put that right up on our um, y-axis. All right, and now we're pretty much just connecting the dots, starting from one end, so our end behavior. We go through this zero because it's a multiplicity of one. All right, then we have to go through this y-intercept. All right, then it's going to come down, and it's going to have to turn to hit the zero. 
all right, and then turn back up and hit that zero, and then go through that end behavior. All right, so you should have the right end behavior. It should go through the zeros with the correct zero behavior, either a bounce, a snake, or straight through. It should it also hit all the zeros and y intercepts. And that's a sketch of our graph. Now, if you it's not really drawn to scale. Like if you look at this distance that 24 is from the x-axis, and this distance that 3 is from the y-axis, like it's not a great scale, but it's just a sketch. Right, and your sketch should have the right end behavior, the right zeros, and the right behavior about the zeros. Other than that, it doesn't have to look exactly like the graphing calculator. All right, and then if you were doing this on your own, you would then check this. So you would go to Desmos, like, and get our graph that we just graphed, and see if it makes sense. All right, so here's what the graph looks like in a graphing calculator. Not exactly like our picture, but it has the right end behavior, it hits the zeros, and it has the right y-intercept. So, um, so we're good. All right, and that's how you graph a polynomial using long and synthetic division. All right, and we didn't do long division, but you could have used it instead of synthetic division if you preferred. You're usually going to save that for when you know... Um, when you know a quadratic factor, but if you don't know any factors or you only know linear factors, you should just stick to synthetic division. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching.